we started having rains in the basin and then more rains and more rains and the lake actually started filling up. And then we were releasing water out of the barrages and releasing more water and more water. So the amount of water that came through the system was incredible. To see the whole lake fill in a year was just amazing. So as part of the Clean Recovery Project, we look at it from a healthy, resilient wetland of international importance. So we always looked at it from a, like, what is the ecological character of the site? What makes it unique? What are we trying to maintain? There were many debates and um, conversations all the way up to the highest levels about whether or not the site would look like it did beforehand. And there were assumptions made by people that it wouldn't, and therefore we should be describing something which is very different going forward. But that's the tricky bit about ecology and the natural environment. It's much more resilient than we think it is, and it can recover. It's just a matter of over what time frame you're talking about. You know, ideally we want to see large numbers when large numbers of species have been there previously and we want to see a higher diversity because that's what the site's known for. But equally, just because something's there doesn't mean that it's healthy, doesn't mean that the site is supporting it. We know that water is the key driver for the site and we know that the ecology will respond to the water. So we needed to work out with water how fast can things recover. Monitoring and research is really the key way to understand what's happening. We sit at our desk and model or, you know, make predictions about how the site's going to respond to how things are going, but unless someone's out there on ground doing these activities, we just don't have that understanding. The CLIM project worked with a range of scientists, so yep, Flinders University, Adelaide University, CSRO, Saudi Aquatic Sciences. We identified key areas of monitoring activities, um, so we were looking at monitoring the responses of things like the fish, the birds, the rupia, aquatic vegetation, water quality. Primarily it was targeted as a collaborative approach where rather than the department talking to an individual researcher and just picking them off one by one, actually trying to get them all in the room at the end of the year and having a discussion about what we had collected information on. There was always this annual review process of what we had done, what we needed to do and what we actually implemented that evolved through the program. We were starting to see species expand their distributions. We were seeing like higher diversity, higher abundance. We were also seeing things that resemble a more functioning wetland. We were seeing things breeding and feeding and we were picking up food availability, diversity of habitats. So we were picking up a more positive picture, recognising that some things were taking longer to respond to the water than others. And even still today, things haven't completely returned. In that five to eight year period of no flows, you'd changed so much of the system to the point that it wasn't going to come back quickly. Mm. And I guess from 2010, 11 onwards, it's been looking at the recovery. Um, and one of the key things which needs to come back is rupia tuberosa. And as a consequence, after three or four years of seeing it had virtually no seed bank and having virtually no chance of recovering quickly, um, they actually decided, the government decided, that maybe translocating some material off some of the ephemeral wetlands into parts like uh, Policeman's Point might be a way of actually facilitating the speed of that recovery. We still recognise that we need to continue to monitor these things so that we can protect them, so that we can try and make sure that they are healthy and that they are going to persist and the site can continue to support them. The scientists understand the site better, the managers understand the site better because of that knowledge, but just as importantly, the community also understand the site better. So those information sharing opportunities, whether they're um, environment days or awareness raising activities or meetings around how the site is managed, are fundamental to effective management. All of that ecological information being shared has actually been the key legacy because more people understand what the site needs and why it needs it and when it needs it. And that's a key thing to actually protecting and managing a site going forward.